and just give me the thumbs up if we're all set. That's great. Thank you. So we are recording this. And if you don't want to be captured on video, I encourage you to leave your video camera off. You can ask questions uh, and we will hear you, but you will not be visually recorded. Let's see, this will be posted to my website and to social media later so that you can watch it again for your own edification and for those who couldn't join us today. And last, I will keep a copy of our comments in the chat box to review where our conversation went and how uh, we can fine tune the program at later times. Just like, nice to see what came up over the course of our magic gathering. So I'm Lisa Miller, and this is the Women's Circle Talk Show on May 17th, 2020. And before I introduce my exciting, generous panel, I'll introduce myself to you, those of you who don't know me yet or the mission of this gathering. I produce, direct, and host this Women's Circle Talk Show. It was born really out of years of facilitating all kinds of women's circles, cancer support groups, one-on-one -on -one bedside chaplaincy, energy healing practice, and all the teaching I did for various yoga schools in yoga, meditation, and, and a bunch of other therapeutic arts, including soul collage. So when quarantine began, um, because I know the deep healing and the great inspiration that women's circles hold, when we all show up for the purpose of self-exploration and fun and to find inspiration, what I knew for sure was that, that we could create the very same sacred space in a space without walls when necessary. And that's exactly what we've done over these recent months. Because the truth is that space is so much more than a physical location. Isn't it true that it's the intention that supports the gathering that is the very nourishment in the foundation of the event? I know many of you find this true time and time again in this context and in the ones that you host and facilitate yourselves. It's really the sacred of the space and the gathering is what we furnish with our knowledge and guidance we bring and our experience and the inclusion we hold and the heart for this and humor and reverence and for sure irreverence. And so here we are, voila, women's circle talk show, virtual space. We're here each week really Diverse women from our 20s through 80s from around the world showing up to inspire one another. And why I focus on that every week, why I mention that you're here from South Africa and Canada and the US and Germany and Italy and Bahamas is because each of us are light holders in our separate little piece of the world. And so whatever experience you've had over your lifetime, you are bringing to furnish this space with that. Of course, we all have shit going on, but we all have really deep wisdom going on too. And when we show up with the intention of learning and laughing and just hanging out together, that is what's up for everyone. So you carry into this energy field the, in your aura exactly what it is you've triumphed over, persevered over over and what you most love. So here we are. Next Sunday is May 24th and it will be the heart of leadership Zoom shop. And this is a place where you can, if you've read the book, The Heart of Leadership for Women, written by the Lisa Miller, um, then you can explore more of this magic, more of how this magic is cultivated. If you yourself are a space holder, or if you want to become one, even in personal relationships, it's a, it's a, a rich question to ask. How is it that I can hold opportunity and potential for me and the people in my space? Even if it's just one person or three, um, never mind crowds of uh, Let's see, how many are we here today? 37 or probably in Allison's case, millions. In Jennifer's case, thousands. So how can I do that is something that we'll explore next week. And Maria Bruna, Sierra Bella, my dear friend is, and Soul Collage mentor will be on the panel with me. Beyond that, we are gonna go to once a month women's circle gatherings. So you all here today are in the finale show. It just seems with 
quarantine restrictions uh, loosening and with the weather beautiful and in so many places from which we gather that we just don't need to meet weekly anymore. So we'll go to um, probably a monthly gathering and you'll have more information about that. So I want to open the floor now, enough talking on my part. So just in your chat box, um, say what you're passionate about. What are you passionate about right now? Because if we're talking about each of us, no one of us holding the magic pill, but each of us carry a wealth of wisdom, what is one thing you're passionate about in your life or just this week? And I'll read to you what's popping in. Painting, knitting, organizing, relationships, learning, communicating. My two-year-old niece, aw, I know the feeling. Clearing space, cuddling with my cat, holding a positive vibe, cultivating inner peace so that it can spread through my community, soul, cooking, staying positive and celebrating the good things. Yes, I say yes, yes, yes. Creative weaving and sewing, cool. Make a new adopted dog feel comfortable. Oh yeah, baby. Gardening, Zoom lunches with my sisters, that's so cool. By the way, how many of you, put your hand up in your little Brady Bunch square. How many of you are here with sisters? How many are you, of you are here with a mom or a daughter? Cool, look at all the hands. Scroll, I'm gonna encourage you to scroll through the next page. We're 38 people present now to see what that is. How many of you are here with a best friend? Cool, I'm checking all the boxes. How many of you are here for the first time? Good, welcome. We needed you to show up today. This group would not have been the same without you. Um, so I'd love to uh, just ask one more question. If one or two people are brave enough to unmute yourselves, who, those of you who were here last week, who would share a little gem, a little takeaway, you'll help set the tone as we move into this sweet gathering today. What's a little takeaway you carried with you through the week from last. And if you were here two weeks ago, that works too. Uh, I was here last week was my first week and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad to be on the finale for my second one. Um, getting familiar with all you ladies is, is an honor, I have to say. Um, but what really left, I took notes last week, so this is easy because I can just look at my notes. <laughs> But what I was um, keeping with me throughout the week was <clears throat> be brave enough to be you um, and let the spirit be support. So those two statements stuck with me a lot. I appreciate that, whoever said those. <laughs> hey, good, I like that. How did that show up for you this week? Uh, I, know you, I know you don't know me well, but I do like to get pushy. <laughs> right. Um, just, I guess, um, I'm, I'm trying to use my heart in making decisions more than my mind. So I think that's where I'm, I'm taking that work into um, finding my interaction with the divine. So trying to let spirit lead me more than my, uh, my research-driven brain. <laughs> yeah, I can resonate with that. And the reason it's so useful for each of us to articulate what it is that works is because then it gets integrated more deeply, you know, into living. We, we ask the questions or, or we find um, a, a statement that really works. And then we just find ourselves living it. So the more it's articulated, the more integrated, but also, especially in a women's circle, we can hold that for each other. We nourish that definitely nourish that outcome for one another just by having witnessed it, listening deeply. Anyone else? We have time for one more. Just unmute yourself and go ahead. Do say your name though, so um, the rest of us can find you on the screen. Y'all know I'm patient. Go ahead, Donna and Jessica, thanks. Yeah. Um, 
I really tried to focus this week on maybe doing, uh, taking a little bit more time to focus on the things that I enjoy the most. Um, things that kind of help me to be more relaxed um, and um, to be more present. So that was, that was nice this week to be a little bit more, a little bit more um, uh, determined to listen to the kind of music that I want to listen to, to take a few minutes to do a few more stretches in the morning um, before I start my early morning holding baby Wren <laughs> while Jessica sleeps uh, at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, so um, those kinds of things where, you know, we're, we're both busy during the day, um, but just taking a little bit more time um, to, even if it's just a, one minute of doing something that makes me feel a little bit more refreshed and a little bit more positive in my energy level. Sounds, it sounds really nourishing. Really, if anything positive has come out of this kooky quarantine time, it's getting comfortable long enough in being planted in one place that we get to really try on these things. Ask ourselves these questions. What is it that I truly want? What is it that I want and um, where and how will that show up for me? Thank you for that, Donna. I want to introduce our first panelist of three today, Dr. Janelle McNeil. She flies with me every week on the Women's Circle Talk Show. She's my good friend. She's a licensed psychologist here in Kentucky, and she's the director of True North Counseling and Development. And she and her team provide counseling and personal and professional services through online and in-person sessions. So you're lucky because here she is today. And if you appreciate her, what she offers and what you need more of, you know how to get in touch with her. She specializes in helping women, in particular, women entrepreneurs and professionals, navigating the ups and downs of life so that they can achieve a sense of confidence and peace in their work and in their personal lives. She is the most wonderful person to hold a confidence to and with, and I encourage that you get in touch. All of her information, along with all the other panelists, is on my website, uh, so you have their contact directly. Where you registered is their bio and their contact information. Janelle, thank you again all these weeks and all this time we've been together. What is it that you, what little gem have you brought today for our gathering? Uh, we're at 40 participants now, women from all over. What is it that you would like to share? Well, thank you for having me again, Lisa. It's always so good to be here. Um, like Lisa said, I am a psychologist here in Lexington, and we have a practice that really focuses on women. We kind of wanted a practice in Kentucky where um, the focus could be women. I'm actually at the office right now. We put pretty colors in. We made it a place that is clear that this is a place for women. And so one thing I've been thinking about, and also I should give my caveat that I always say, this is not therapy. These are just my thoughts. Please don't take this as therapy because it's not. All right, that's my, that's my quick, where they talk really fast at the end, at the end segment. Um, however, what's been on my mind is balance. So I really like what Jess, or Donna was saying. Was that you, Donna, who was saying that, that you're trying to incorporate more balance in your life? Because right now, I think people are really trying to figure out, they've been thrown off kilter. They've been, they've been forced to stay at home or they've been forced to do things that they wouldn't regularly do. Their schedules have changed. And it's made me think a lot about work-life balance. So I get calls of people saying, no, can you please help me? I'm, I feel like I'm working too much. Or I feel like I'm just losing a sense. I'm not spending enough time with my family. All of these things are happening. And I say, yes. So they say, I want work-life balance. And I say, yes, we, we can talk about that. But I tell them pretty quickly that I don't believe in work-life balance. That's something I just simply don't believe in. And what I have found to be true is that life is more of a rhythmic kind of thing rather than balance. So I think of balance, I think, of, I think about music a lot when I describe things. So if you think about the metronome, right? You have a four, four beat. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's boring. Right, that is incredibly boring. That is a very boring beat. We have to, we need syncopation. We need something to like jazz it up. So people think that they want an evenness in life. They want the, the steady one, two, three, four, 
but that would be a very bland and boring and too predictable life. So I say, let's have some music. Life is actually the music. You're asking for a metronome beat. And I think we need to like be aware that life is music. My, life has syncopation, right? That's what makes it good. It's, it's the, the heavy pause before, boom, you know, the violins and the strings jump in or something. All of that is what works. So part of what we talk about is day-to-day -day rhythm in, in life and being okay with the morning rhythm and the, the mid-afternoon rhythm, the evening rhythm, and learning what your rhythms are. But more and more, I'm, I'm tapping more into the rhythms of our entire lifetime. And I think this is going to have a lot to do with the people who are talking right now with, with our guests today. I feel like I'm really interested in hearing more about their rhythm over life. Where um, Zora Neale Hurston, who wrote Their Eyes Were Watching God, I'm sure many of you have read that. It's a lovely piece. If you haven't read it, um, that's your assignment from me today, is to get Their Eyes Were Watching God and to read that. Zora Neale Hurston. But she has a quote where she said, there are years that ask questions and years that answer. And I think a lot of us are experiencing a year that is asking questions and we must have faith that following this period of questions will be our answers. And if we look at our lives over the course of our lives, we've had, we've had times of great growth and great excitement or great activity. And then we have more calm steady, s slow years that you think, oh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm stuck, right? We've all had those stuck, the stuck years, right? And so I want us to just think today, or I'd like to leave you with that. I, I'd like you to, to just leave you with the idea that we have rhythm in our life and we can trust the rhythm and we can actually enjoy the rhythm and not want it to be a boring metronome, but instead say, yes, I love, I love this Calypso beat. <laughs> right. I love this close so beat of my life and just lean into that. That's my jam. <laughs> wow. It could be a 70s jam too. I, it could be. So I'm a child of the 70s. I'm yeah. It could be the Commodores, right? It could, it be, could really, yeah. It could, it could totally it could be it could be, it could be Sunny and Cher. It could it could be Stevie Wonder. Because the beat goes on, right? It could, <laughs> yes. Y'all, what do you what do you feel how are you feeling about this? What what resonates with you? You can just put your hand up in your little square and unmute yourself and just go ahead. What resonates with you about this that you really find juicy that you might want to explore more? Bring it up so that we can play with it. Go ahead, Beverly. I like Beverly. the idea of rhythm. Um, um, and I'm thinking of myself, melody and harmony and all those ideas that music brings to this dance we call life. Yes. And uh, I really like that. I hadn't thought of it that way, but yes, I agree because you can't stay in balance. It's like trying to stand on top of a, a board on a ball. So, um, but to dance your way, like, I don't know if you have kids in your house, but when I did, and there was always something on the floor to trip over and having to dance my way through a room just to get to a light switch. Yeah, that I see that. Yes, yes, we, we, we currently have that life. <laughs> yes. And I especially love, there are years that have us ask questions. That are questions. Yes, there are years that are questions. Questions and there ask are questions years and that years are that are answers. Thank yes. you so much for that woman and for those words. Just to know that, I mean, the depth of that, the wisdom of that, the truth of that. We don't have to try to make our lives fit. And it's like girdling up, you know, I feel like we've mentioned girdles before, right? Not about yeah. a girl, but I feel like we try to girdle ourselves and say, I will spend 50% of my time here, 50% of my time here. And if we can just say right now, the family's getting more, more attention and later on they'll get less and work will get more attention. And later on, neither the family nor work will get so much attention and your personal, you personally will get more attention. Yay. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is a time for attention to personal health. Yeah. Physical, mental. Emotional, yes. spiritual. Maybe this is a time really that a, that career is blooming. I've never been yeah. busier. This is the third 
virtual workshop I've facilitated in four days. Yeah. Wow. So, so it could be a time, it, it could be a time for people uh, answering questions. It could be a time for people to ask them each and be okay either way either way is fine and correct and there's room for both in the history of our lives things have really typically always worked out i want us to all consider all of the challenges that we faced that at the time we felt were impossible and now here we are on the other side of challenge with 2020 vision looking back realizing it worked out this too shall pass so I would love everybody now, um, unless someone has a hand to raise and another voice to add to this good conversation, just take a moment, now's your chance, but you'll have more chances later. Um, just go ahead and in your chat box, what do you really want? What do you really want? You know, it's, it's really the question that's the nourishment in the soil here. What do I really want? And if you don't want to share it with a, a group of your 40 closest strangers, type, put it in your journal. But what do I really want? So get really clear about that. You're, you're planting a seed here. I want security and freedom. I want to figure it all out. Well, good, let us know when you, uh, when you have all the answers to everything, please, I would really appreciate the book. Um, to get back to the land, oh yeah, accept the present moment and what it brings, to feel that whatever's happening is okay, to be completely comfortable and confident in my own skin. I hear you. It gets easier, I think, the older we get. What else, what do you really want? Writing it down in your journal. Courage. This is a kind of a, a sacred time where here we all are, have gathered and preceding us into this circle is some kind of sacred potential. The potential for transformation really grows exponentially when we gather for this purpose. So this is really your time to get clear with yourself. You don't have to say it publicly. Put it in your journal and really, really begin to let that seed grow roots under the surface there. But anyone else, anyone want to say anything or ask a question of Dr. McNeil? Hi, it's Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi. Go ahead. Uh, well, we're living in a three-generational house. This is the how many weeks, Michelle? Many weeks. Many weeks. Uh, <laughs> maybe six. Um, so it has been a true test of cooperation of consideration, um, of love, and uh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience because everybody has to work at it in their own way. And um, I feel blessed because in this isolation, I've had my children and they've taken good care of Papa and I. And um, this morning, our 12-year-old grandson uh, made breakfast. Everybody was doing something, and he went in, and he said, Papa, would you like breakfast? And uh, we just got such a kick out of it, and he made eggs, and, you know, he did what he needed to do. So I really hear what you're saying here, Karen, is, is about the unpredicted gifts that have come from a time of uncertainty and isn't that really the message for all of us because what we're doing here in this explorative place is not just for this season right now this time of of quarantine this global pandemic that's making history but this opportunity to go deeper into the what it, what is it that i want and what do i need to pay attention to now that i'm really grounded where i am is relevant for every season of our lives it's relevant for every chapter moving forward. So truly, while there, ha there are obviously pains, deep pains for many that go with this, it is also infused at the same time with gifts. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for that. Anyone else? One more? 
So in our chat box, I would love to feel peace. I would love to feel courage, to have motivation, drive, and ease about life, to see the gifts in everything and the unpredicted gifts of uncertainty. Yes. Okay. Agreed. So when, uh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that when Janelle was speaking, um, all I could think about was that saying, um, what is it? you move to the beat of your own drum, you know, like everyone has their own rhythm, their own beat. And, um, you know, to be able to find the rhythm that works for you, right? To find that beat that works for you. And it's like, we all have our own. Um, so yeah, I'm inspired to find what, what, what my rhythm is, so thank you. <laughs> Isn't that true? We don't all dance at the same club and we don't all marry the same guy. Uh, I'd love to move to our next panelist today, Jennifer Haddo, speaking of rhythm the natural rhythm of the seasons and of nature is Jennifer's specialty. She's in British Columbia, Canada, and she's the owner of Wild Women Expedent Expeditions, an outdoor adventure travel company for women. She's passionate uh, and she's an advocate for the protection of wild spaces and promoting the value of women's leadership in the outdoors. And she's led public engagement programs for a variety of environmental and social justice nonprofits, including Oxfam Canada, the Canadian Environmental Network. Wild Women Adventures has been featured in National Geographic Explorer Magazine, The Globe and Mail, Live the Adventure, Explore Afar, Paddling Magazine, and she is a favorite wild woman of Helen and I both. <laughs> Welcome, Jennifer. We're so glad to have you. What is it that you would like to share with us today about cultivating strength and inspiration and the rhythm of all that we're talking about good and healthy in our lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, I feel that there are many wells of, um, of, nourishment and and wisdom uh resources that i can pull up in this time and one of the most um i guess useful lenses that i bring to how i'm navigating through this uh, extraordinary chapter um is really the the experiences i've had as a traveler as an adventurer um, in the natural world you know there's many things that i can um i can touch on that bring me strength and a sense of power and purpose um, and in the work that i do in the world and just in my own life experience um, i often go back to this narrative of I could say being a wild woman and what, what that means for me and means many things. And so in this time of, of COVID, um, my work is to run an international travel company. So you can probably imagine <laughs> how I've been doing. Um, one of the, the things that came up for me really out of the gate was this sense of identity. Um, so Lisa uh, gave this lovely introduction to you know this um, this work that I do that's been featured in National Geographic and it's it's very celebrated in many ways um, and I certainly have felt a lot of pride in my work and I also felt a lot of value and purpose you know it um, the the work that I I do in so many ways. Um, you know, that saying that there's no real separation between work and life, you know, and so my, my sense of identity and my personal worth in the world are very woven with the work that I do. And I think that's a blessing. Um, and so suddenly travel is bad and scary. And there's fear everywhere around this, um, this offering <laughs> you know um, now it's stay home stay away don't move um, don't go outside or you can't go outside and I um, so so for me there was a lot of um, in that sense a uh, shock to, to, to grapple with and so what I want to say is um, 
that the sense of value of what I was offering in the world had to change. So it wasn't in that time, in those, those first few weeks especially, um, my sense of, of promoting travel, which I could no longer do, I had to come, come back to a deeper place of what is my true work in the world? What is my value? And it, tip, it took a different form. And over days and the first few weeks, I started to change my identity in a sense of, I don't feel like I promote travel. It's just one form of what I'm about, what I'm offering in this world. And so I found there to be such resilience in letting go or just shaking loose even a bit of this idea of our identity having to be, I am a and coming back to a deeper sense of purpose in this is what the meaning of this is and the form can change you know um i can still do my work in the world and that doesn't mean that it has to take the form of travel even <laughs> there are a few women on this on this uh call who who uh, i know have been on including lisa have been on um tours that i organize and and if travel wasn't possible, I would still be doing this work in the world because my work is really about, I feel, nurturing that adventurous spirit in women. And travel is a tool to do that. And there are many other ways to do that. It's about finding our connection with, with our environment, with our Mother Earth, with our nature in whatever way we can, whether that's hiking or kayaking. It could be gardening. <laughs> Maybe I'll become a master gardener guru. I don't know what it will look like in the future. And I hope very much, and I intend very much that it will be continued to uh, facilitate uh, travel. Um, but I feel like this, this opening my mind to um, my purpose and my intention became more important than the form that it took. So, so that was really important for me. Um, and the other thing that I've drawn on um, very much in finding resilience through this time, because as everyone in this group, I've been dealing with many challenges and I also feel uh, incredibly blessed in many, in many aspects of my life. Um, and so what I've drawn on are these lessons from my travels, from my adventures in the natural world. And, um, you know, for me, travel has never become never been about just having a fun vacation it was rarely superficial you know um i'm i don't see travel as getting away from the world as opposed to a way of engaging deeply in in the world and having having um empowering transformative experiences and so when i looked looked into that well in this time that you know i'm feeling so Oh, that's shaken to me. My shaken me to my core in many ways, um, and it hasn't been hasn't always been pretty. <laughs> and I don't want to act like it's been easy or graceful. And um, you know, I've been I've been sobbing <laughs> on the bathroom floor, you know, uh, with just panic um, at several points. Uh, and and what has so what has nourished you in the in these yeah. times? What has come up for you that's been a bomb when you sat with the question, when you yeah. shook loose, who am I? When you yeah. shook that loose, what came up for you? So, so there's, there's two or three travel experiences that I can point to that, that illustrate this. One is um, about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis and it was um, uh, to make what could be a long story short. Um, it, you know, it was, it brought up a lot of fears about, um, uh, my mortality and my uh, ability. And so one of the things I did at that time was travel to uh, Nepal. And even though I was uh, walking with a little bit of a limp, actually, um, I trekked for a month to Mount Everest. And how did I do that? Because it was a very crazy thing to think that I could do. I did it one step at a time. And it was a long, long trek. And I watched the sunrise uh, on top of Mount Everest. I wasn't on top of Mount Everest. I, I trekked to base camp. But what that experience taught me was don't worry about 
whether you can do it, just take the next step. And I took one step at a time for many, many days. Um, and I made it to see the top of the world with my own eyes. So that kind of memory of really just don't think about the destination, just take the next step. Even if, even if you're shaking, even if you're stumbling, take the next step and just let, let the future projection go. Um, another experience I had that I, I feel like was really um, instructive for me right now is when I traveled to uh, central India and I went on a tiger safari. Um, and here I am sitting in the jungle about 10 feet away from a tigress in an open air Jeep and there's nothing between us except the cool evening air. And a wild tiger is looking at me. And I had a lot of fears about wild animals. Most people do. Um, and, and I thought this is going to go very badly. You know, there was that fear part of my brain that thought just the same thing as when this COVID thing came up, all of my fear stories, I'm going to be out of business. I'm going to, you know, lose everything. And I'm, I had all of these fears of the worst case story. And I remember that experience sitting in the jungle with that tigress thinking she's going to jump into the Jeep and eat me. <laughs> and you know what? She didn't. And I felt so clear in that experience that when I let my fear stories go of all the worst case scenarios, it actually was one of the most beautiful um, feelings of communion and connection that I was in this incredible wild space. And um, I felt very right about it. You know, I felt like I was a guest in her home and, and um, it was beautiful and I felt the truth of that experience was that it was a beautiful time and I didn't expect that. Um, and then the, the other uh, reference I wanted to make to kind of what I've drawn on is when I, I've traveled to, to Egypt many times. I've been to Egypt seven times now. And so I've been to the pyramids a dozen times. And every time I think I travel to be humbled and to be awed by the the power and the mystery of this world. And there are things that can be done and things that can be created by people and certainly by nature um, that, that are, are awesome and just completely humbling. I don't know anything. <laughs> and the more I travel, the more I realize that. And so when I go to Egypt and I stand before the Great Pyramid of Egypt, and there is no way that we can know how that was constructed by people, some would say. <laughs> um, and so, so to stand in, in humility and reverence and awe of, of what people can do when they put their energy together and and to see the pyramids and to feel that um i don't think i've ever felt that that um awe at what people can create together um as when i've seen the pyramids of egypt and so again in this time of covid i mean what can we create together what can how can i be part of that how can i be part of pushing one block you know because it takes many many blocks to make a pyramid and when i think of just pushing whatever energy i have forward into this great new construction um, of this new world um, then it yeah it gives me it gives me a sense of purpose a sense of value a sense of identity um, that goes beyond what i felt i had um, yes. so wow and you and you yeah. make, i think you make us all think about the truth that we are not our positions or yeah. possessions. We are not our, our experiences. We are not our thoughts, but there's a deeper, more whole place in the core of being that is enduring, that recognizes the magnificence of the pyramids and can commune with the tiger in nature and can help you move forward one step at a time through an MS diagnosis to mm -hmm. climb a mountain of that magnitude. 
Yeah. Janelle says here in the chat, your stories make it so clear that just on the other side of fear and uncertainty is often great joy and meaning. I'd love to open the floor now for mm -hmm. a resonance, something that was shared that really stirs some awareness or resonance in you or a question that you might have for Jennifer. What's coming up for you? Let's play. Fran, you're unmuted. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to say um, I really appreciated your stories about um, places you'd been in the past and how you could, in the times like now during this, this global pandemic, that you could rely on those experiences from the past to kind of help you through this to know that, no, you didn't get eaten by the tiger and um, nor will you be annihilated by this time in life. Um, so I really like that if, that you can, anyone can draw on experiences of the past to help them through what seems like something difficult in the current time. Yes, this is the perfect segue. It's like I, it's like I, paid my sister to say this right then, although she, I really didn't. Um, somehow she knows on some level exactly what I'm, where I'm going. In your chat box, what do you remember dreaming about and wondering if it could ever possibly become your reality that is now part of your life? Put it in the chat box. What did you dream about? Wondering if it could ever possibly become a reality that is now your life. Let's see. Put it in the chat box. Being a mother, recon reconciling the past, an unconditionally loving husband, adopting a child, teaching laughter yoga, getting my phd oh there are a couple of people here who will nod their head yes in unison i'm not one of them but i know many of them forgiving myself yes sobriety and giving back to others forgiving others enjoying inner freedom amen growing up in a low socioeconomic bracket with very few opportunities and as a contrast everything i have now is the fulfillment of my dreams wowza having it be acceptable to just stay at home. Yes, yes, there are many for whom this is normalcy. Welcome to their world. Building my own private art studio and workshop for classes for me and others, teaching, how wonderful is that? Living among horses, loving myself. Mm, the beautiful period on this conversation loving myself that says it all so i on that note on that airy nice long sigh let's all take a moment and really ground into it so part of the sweetness of these gatherings is really learning what it means to be embodied and really integrating the physical the emotional mental and spiritual as a mind body health facilitator i can't help but throw in some of this goodness when we get together why not it's such medicine so take a good deep breath now in your seat i know some of you look forward to this meditation every week and it takes so little time to get there so we'll just take five minutes here really get comfortable if you're not comfortable you're never going to really want to relax so feather your nest you can grab a pillow or a blanket if you need just feather your nest get comfy there's nowhere else you have to be this is your time it's not a luxury, it's medicinal for you to take care of yourself. It is a must. Take a slow inhale here. And when you get to the top of your inhale, just hold, just hold. Kambaka in Sanskrit means pause and exhale when you're ready, slowly, slowly, slowly controlling your exhale. Pause at the end of your exhale. Speaking of music, that beautiful space 
between notes. And when you feel ready, take an inhale again. Pausing at the top and at the bottom of your inhales and your exhales. Those pauses rich with potential, but, but places of stillness. And just notice what that feels like. And if your mind wanders to other thoughts, just bring your attention back to your inhales and your pauses and your exhales and your pauses. And now allow yourself to release your shoulders down and away from the ears with the next exhale and grow roots into the earth, make like a tree. And with your next exhale, grow your roots down into mother earth. We pollute her inadvertently and purposely and she still nourishes all of us, everything that walks upon her. Pull up that nourishment. Bring it up through your feet with your inhale. As your lungs expand, this energy effortlessly travels up through your feet and your own trunk, fountaining out the crown of your head and your limbs simultaneously. And for the next 60 seconds, I'm going to have you count your inhale. So I'm going to time you. Just count your inhale slowly and pausing and exhaling slowly and pausing. And just notice how you're feeling in your body as you attend to your breath. You can do both things. You can focus and attend and relax and breathe all at the same time. And that's 60 seconds. Take a nice deep inhale here with an audible sigh. No one can hear you. Let it go. So And again, the sound of your own relaxation mirrors for yourself, deepens, reflects for yourself what you're seeking. And with your next inhale, shoulders down and away from the ears, notice that you can still feel your feet, your roots functioning down, anchored down into the earth below. But you yourself are light, and graceful in your body, anchored and graceful, grounded, light and rejuvenated. One more inhale, audible sigh. And just let go of your focus, let go of your noticing and just be still. Just for 20 seconds, just be still. Noticing what you notice, just with curiosity. What's going on with me? What's happening in my mind? What's happening in my body? Just notice. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Good. So that was five whole minutes, or only five minutes, depending on how you felt about it. If you were frustrated, it was five whole minutes. If you loved it, it was all, oh, it was only five minutes. What are you feeling? What are you noticing and what are you feeling? Put it in the chat box. I'm just curious. I feel calm, someone says. I feel ease, much calmer, calm again, relaxed, extreme thirst that I was ignoring. Oh, good for you. Good for you for now being aware, peaceful. That this is reachable anytime. Yes, sister. I literally mean that because my sister said that. I feel a sense of having enough. Oh, that's everything. I feel guilty that I am calm in these moments. I get that. I understand that. Yes. Feeling well, guilt. That's a thing. I feel aware. I feel clarity. 
Good. So you will take this with you. Five minutes. You will take this with you. You know how to do it. You don't need fancy equipment and you don't need anybody cueing you. You know exactly what you need to do. And there are billions of apps you can download if, you, if it's really a guided meditation that you like. I want to turn our Women's Circle conversation over to the fabulous Allison Miller now. She is, grew up in Kentucky, partly, but she lives in LA now. She's an artist, an actor, writer, producer. She does it all. She's a musician. She plays Maggie Bloom on the ABC hit show, A Million Little Things. And in 2019, her film Growth was chosen as a finalist in the International Women's Film Festival and was an official selection at LA Indie Film Fest and Liftoff Global and Network London 2019. She is cool and funny, and I'm so glad you're here, Allison. Thanks for joining us. You can unmute yourself. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking today about these rhythms uh, in our lives, these question times, these answer times, what it means to be a wild woman, all of this identity stuff, nurturing the spirit where in whatever direction it, it seems to go in each of us, not letting fear stories stand in the way. What do you want to add today about art and what you've known to be true, what you may not have had faith could be possible, but that now that you're living or what you did have faith and are now living because of it? It's so funny the way that things work out um, because yesterday I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about with you and I came across this quote that really goes back to what Dr. McNeil was saying. So, um, it's a quote from Marvin Gaye that just resonated with me um, in the way that it's, it's exactly how I think about art and what it does for me and what it does for all of us. Uh, and the quote is, I hope to refine music, study it, try to find some area that I can unlock. I don't know how to explain it, but it's there. These can't be the only notes in the world. There's got to be some other notes someplace in some dimension between the cracks on the piano keys. And I just thought that was the most beautiful thing I'd ever read because that's what art feels like for me, um, every form of it that I engage in. It's seeking the spaces in between everything that we see and we talk about and in the structures that we've created. What is it that is sort of weaving it all together in this invisible way? Um, and that is so much of what I'm experiencing with art now too. Um, going through a lot of different emotional waves, as Jennifer was talking about. Sometimes it's crying on the floor, sometimes it's total numbness. And I can't always access exactly what I'm feeling. And rather than let that uh, overtake me, I find that expressing it through art is the way that I can understand it. Um, so, I I may not be able to sit down at my computer and say, dear diary, <laughs> right now I am feeling X. Uh, but if I sit down and just start free writing or I'm in a, in a women's poetry group every week that is really, really helpful and nourishing for me that feels a lot like what I'm experiencing with this today where it's a sense of connection and we're taking the time to read a poem and then 20 minutes away to write our own response or whatever we feel like it can be prose, words, poetry. And what I end up coming away with every week is a piece of poetry that's expressing something that I didn't know I was thinking or feeling until I just took the time to get it out. Um, and that's, that's art, that's art for me. Even uh, ceramics, which is something that I share with my mom who is here. Uh, 
it's meditative and it's a, it has a quality of creation that's just, you have no idea what you're going to get. It could be a complete disaster. I've had things fall apart and it, then you could end up with an amazing piece of art or a functional bowl or something that you give to somebody and sits in their house for years and years and years. So it's just, it's, I guess art is living in the, in the unknowing and making that a comfortable place to be. Well, you had no idea Janelle would open today with life is music. It's so I couldn't believe it. I had no idea until moments before, <laughs> before this started. I was like, I oh yeah, it. that. <laughs> it was you totally know, meant to be. <laughs> you know, these synchronicities show up there. They're a high five from the universe that we're on the right track. And I love what you say about seeking the spaces in between and in the, within the structures we've created. They're, they're, even in, a, in, a, in parameters that feel so narrow, we can really we can create so much more space within, within that. I love too that you talk about how even when you're making pottery and it, it doesn't work out, how that's something that becomes some um, nourishment for moving forward, how, how becoming is still happening even when the goal, when you think the goal hasn't been met. So what have you, um, in addition to poetry, what, what does your your day look like as an artist in this time when you're just trying to manage? Um, sometimes it's uh, eating ice cream in bed, uh, but sometimes it's also I'm I'm writing scripts. I have been painting. Something that I have found really fun is finding the goofiest photograph of one of my friends I can find and then painting a portrait from that and sending it to them. Uh, it's just a nice way of connecting and, and entertaining myself and making people laugh. Um, been playing music and one thing I loved in trying to find connection even though we're all separated is I have been trying to uh, do harmonies and duets with friends so I have recorded a song sent it to a friend she sang harmony on it and then we're trading places and doing the same thing um, and also just lots of really long walks and thinking about what kind of other art I would like to be creating and, and sort of missing the action of being in a, a community creating art, which is what I normally do for work. Uh, but it's kind of nice to miss that because when we get tied up in it, it starts feeling more like a job and less like, like creation. Mm, nice to miss that. It's nice to miss that. And isn't it nice to be missed? I love it when my people tell me they've missed me. I love that. Yes. Have you thought? Have you thought of that? Have you thought about that? <laughs> I haven't thought about that at all, but it is very nice. Yes. So here, so here's a question for uh, an artist: Do you sometimes have to push yourself into the good feeling space? Push yourself toward your guitar. Push yourself toward your wheel, or toward your walk, um, or toward painting, because you know once you get there, there's some nourishment. Absolutely. And that's talk to us, talk to us about the push. Well, with anything, I think that feels good. Sometimes I think it's necessary to take the time to wallow uh, in the bad feelings as well. But uh, when it feels like, okay, that's been enough of that. Um, I notice, especially just with the walks, I come out of it feeling so much more uh, expansive and like there's room for possibility and not so stuck. Um, with the music, I find that that's the easiest thing to go to because that's the, that is, that's the most therapeutic for me because it's purely um, a hobby that just breaks me out of 
something any any funk I might be in, and I think I've read a lot about the uh, vagus nerve that runs through our whole bodies and about the breathing that's required for singing. And that seems to be a meditative uh, process in its own way where I'm singing and I'm not thinking, oh, I'm resetting my nervous system, but it just naturally happens. Um, so I tend to, I think I tend to push myself a lot in life all the time. So these things feel less like less like pushes. The only real one that's there is, okay, just get out the door and be outside and it'll be okay. Yes. Yes. It's, it's on that push spectrum. It's on the, it's in the balanced part of the spectrum where it's not too much. It's not too little. It's just enough. And it's leading toward the pendulum, finding, finding you in the middle. I love that. Something that you said really resonates with me too. And I, I wonder if um, you are a psychologist on television who talks to pretend clients about wallowing in the bad feelings a while. Yes. Here, here in person, our real life psychologist. What would you say about that, Janelle? How important that You've heard is. heard me say that so many times, Lisa. Have I though? <laughs> yes. I was like, Alan is very, Alison is very wise. This Alison Miller, very wise woman. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yes. So, you know, again, we all think we have a negative feeling and that we want to get away from it. But if we can take the time and, and I know I've said this before on, on this show, but allowing that negative feeling to come and sit on our lap acknowledge it, say, I see you. And what is it that you're here to tell me, right? If we can accept every single one of our feelings as being natural and normal and correct and there for a reason, and they always are, they always are. I mean, we hear Jennifer's story about how she had MS. So many of us are like, oh, that'd be horrible, that'd be awful. She took MS and made it into a way for her to figure out what her life's meaning was. She was able to take that diagnosis and, and do some really cool ninja stuff with it and turn it into this amazing new life for herself that she likely wouldn't have ever done before unless it had happened. So if, if as we have the gift of, and I know this sounds horrible, right? But as we have the gift of death, we have the gift of loss, we have the gift of difficult times, we can take that and make beautiful art from it. We can make beautiful connections from it. We can make love from pain. And that's yes. what I'm hearing you say, Allison. It's, it's like, yes, I loved it that you said, give that feeling a time to be there and experience it. But you don't have to live there for the whole rest of your life. Not helpful, right? Not helpful for the rest of your life. But yes, give it space to breathe. Give it, give it a chance to express itself. I love that. Thank yes. You. And as an artist, Allison, how does having spent time in those dark places and those, in that, those wallowing times and those stuck times, how does that inform your art moving forward? What does that do for you? Uh, that's, I think, everything that I've gotten to do on the show that I work on right now in the last couple of years and the art that I made, the short that I made was, uh, was inspired by a time that I had in my life with uh, an undiagnosed uh, chronic pain uh, disorder, if you want to call it that, condition, um, bouncing around from doctors to healers to therapists to just trying to figure out what was going on. And that confusion and that pain, uh, pushed me to write this script and shoot this short and now it's in festivals and it feels like such an extension of me and it feels like empowerment, like taking exactly taking the pain and making art from it. And that's something, one of my best friends shot her short the week before mine and hers um, is also a, both of ours are dark comedies, but she experienced, um, child loss. Uh, she was pregnant and um, lost the baby and she felt like people don't want to talk about that and it's something that is, is kept really private. 
but she felt like it needed to be discussed. And so she made this really beautiful, moving, very funny piece of art um, that got into South by Southwest. And now she is has been asked by Fox to direct a, a funny, dark feminist horror movie because of her personal story that brought her so much pain. It's now bringing so much more art and and healing to her. I um, hear I hear that. I can hear that. I can hear how rich that is. And it's so, it feels like it's so different. And you all tell me, tell me if you agree or disagree. It's so different from reinfecting ourselves with the poor me story, speaking it aloud in this way, making art from it, as you say, take your pain and make art from it, is a way of taking a step back from the story and finding the richness of the experience therein. What a cool, what a cool thing. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I, I want to, just in these final moments, ask you if you have any questions for Allison or a resonance about something she shared. This is your time. You can just unmute yourself and go ahead. We have just some final minutes here in our women's circle. So if you'd like to add your voice, now's your opportunity. I just have a question. Do you find that you use different arts for different moods? Like say, if you're really, really down, do you, is music a better way to get at it as opposed to the physical movement of pottery or, or that kind of stuff? Yeah, definitely. I think if the, if the, yes, <laughs> music tends to be the one, especially if it's um, sitting down at the piano that's something that feels like I can just bang away at it and and take out a lot of frustration because um, sometimes I don't feel like singing. <laughs> you just don't want to. Um, and yeah, pottery. I think I I used a lot as um, you know. Sometimes it's important to use distraction techniques or or uh, avoidant behaviors uh, to deal with things. And yeah, pottery is much more of a, a space to go when I need to be meditative and focus on something other than what's going on in here. Definitely. Good question, Beverly, because isn't it so relevant for each of us to know the recipe, the, the ingredients and in the recipe that we need at any given time? So sometimes you need a little more sugar, sometimes a little more cumin in the recipe hopefully not sugar and cumin in the same recipe but as long as you know the your necessary ingredients no one has the same recipe for everything no no two of us are graduating from the same life curriculum so i love this idea of knowing what it is that you need at any given time um, take an opportunity now and just say you know allison brought up such a great point about the reset so what uh do you know what are the ing your ingredients in your reset right now for one or two things. What do you know is a relevant and pervasive ingredient in your reset recipe? Type it in your chat box. Let's see what you got. You say focused breathing, art journaling, time alone, getting my hands into the soil, good conversation. I will add t television. I cannot live without television, comedy, and movies. Deep nature connection, being active in the wild, healthy eating, remembering to breathe, less news on television. I need a me day. I need a good cry and a conversation with a friend. I need to meditate. I need to talk it out. Yes, I'm with you. I need yoga of all types. I need crochet because it's because I'm going to be a grandma. <laughs> Yay. I need just the process of creating crochet, knitting, beading. Yeah, my sister and I kind of have a motto that we should needlepoint onto a pillow. If I don't got a good project, what's the point of anything? So I uh, would love for you now to say what you're dreaming about. Just say what you're dreaming about. What are you dreaming about? 
you asked, we asked earlier ourselves, what do I really want? Then we asked, what it is, what do I remember dreaming about wondering if it would ever become my reality that is now my reality? And let's, let's wrap this up here just for now. What are you dreaming about moving forward? I'm dreaming about travel. Oh, me too. What are you dreaming about? Hugging my grandchildren, living in the country, art and craft studio, clarity. I'm dreaming about the next chapter of my life. I'm with you. I'm always dreaming about the next chapters and I'm also trying to enjoy the one I'm in. Continuing to have these connections with other women. I'm dreaming about sitting down with friends at a table at a restaurant, yes. I'm literally dreaming of kitchen table talk in my new kitchen. I'm dreaming of normalcy. I'm dreaming of living without fear, traveling again, a game night, future projects. I'm designing. It's wonderful. And um, dreaming about having fun. I, I'm so happy that you joined me today. I hope that you can take a, a gem, a little pearl of wisdom that was offered today and integrate it into the coming weeks. You don't need someone cueing you to find the, the richness in the garden that you're, you're growing in your life. But it's always wonderful to have a supportive community and friends and other women who speak the same physical, emotional, spiritual language that you do. So I want to invite you next week to join me here again for our final gathering in May. It will be focused on the heart of leadership for women and i will um we will play in what how it is that this magic is created when we get together whether you join me next week or not i would love it if you would write a review of my book on amazon in the industry amazon reviews are a standard metric for determining in the among the publishers whether a book has legs and wings if you would do that, it would help me out greatly because I have I, continuing ideas for gatherings like this that I wanna keep doing and I would love my publisher to hire me to facilitate them. So if you like this and want more of this, that's a way that we can together grow that dream for all of our benefit. Um, follow me on Instagram, Lisa Miller Beautiful Day. And on Facebook, I'm Lisa Morris Miller. And um, you can register for the workshop next week on my website, lisamillerbeautifulday.com, under workshops. And you don't have to have read the entire book in order to join next week. The only prerequisite is that you download it or that you have a copy in your hands when you join us. You can have read one paragraph and you can be included, and I would love it. Um, Alyssa, my production team, do you have anything to add? No, I think we're good, but we do want to take a photo. We do want to take a photo and um, we will do that after, uh, how about after I read the poem? And also on my website is Alyssa's information. She is one half of the Kentucky Hempsters team and um, knows everything about the industry and is an amazing support and creative um, forward looking entrepreneur herself. From Thich Nhat Hans, the uh, no mud, no lotus, the art of happiness. The essence of your practice can be described as transforming suffering into happiness. It's not a complicated practice, but it requires you to cultivate mindfulness, concentration, and insight in your life. It requires, first of all, that you come home to yourself, that you make peace with your suffering, treat it tenderly, look deeply at the roots of your pain, it requires that you let go of useless, unnecessary sufferings and release the second arrow and take a closer look at your idea of happiness. Finally, the essence and the art of happiness requires that you nourish your happiness daily with acknowledgement, with understanding, and with compassion for yourself and those around you. You offer these practices to your very self to your loved ones, and to the larger community. This is the art of suffering and the art of happiness together. With each breath, you ease suffering 
and you generate joy. With each step, the flower of insight blooms. Any final words from my panel? Anything you would like to say before we check out today? I have one thing to say. Thank you so much, Lisa. This has been such a joy to do this. I know, you, I know it's not the end. I know that, that we're moving to monthly, but I cannot tell you how nice it has been to be here every week and to see some familiar faces and see, just to hear what people are experiencing and to have this connection and this closeness. And I want to say that you have inspired me. So um, we actually are going to start having support groups um, for different people and different experiences. But again, for women, um, I was like, this is great. And this is what the world needs. And so I can make this happen. And so we're actually going to be having online support groups um, that look like they'll be starting in June. Um, but I just wanted to say, this has been so nice to be a part of this and to, to meet so many of you. And it's, I, it's such, it is such a sweet spot in my week to be able to be around around all of you and to get your words and your loveliness. So thank you. Thank you. And look how we have extended our support for one another. Women from everywhere of all ages and generations. Anything, um, Jennifer or Allison? I would just want to say thank you. This is so great and so uplifting and, and uh, it's a wonderful way to spend a Sunday. I, I feel like I need to be back for this because it's just so, um, I don't know, I feel very filled. Yeah, you'll come back as a guest and be completely off duty and just have fun, continue to have fun and play without mm -hmm. having to present something deep and wise. <laughs> and it's great. And I love that your mom is here too. It's, it's, I, I loved all week knowing that you'd be here together. Jennifer, anything um, before we? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm so grateful for this space and so many other spaces where women are, are uh, managing to get together. And um, right now that's often online. One thing I want to say is um, part of my rhythm balance is to get offline and to get into nature, as Allison said, I mean, whatever you can do, I think that really is my purpose <laughs> at this time is to be, um, be another voice for, let's, let's get offline, let's get out of our heads, let's get our bodies into mother nature and she will take care of us. Um, and so walk, swim, I was skinny dipping yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need to do to just get embodied into nature, I think is one of the most healing, nourishing, powerful things we can do as women, as, as humans. So great to be online with you and I'm getting outside. <laughs> Thank you. So in the, in the indigenous tradition, it's, it's um, traditional to raise your hands and say ho. And if you would do that, Alyssa will take our picture. If you don't want to be included, just end meeting now. You won't miss anything. But otherwise, ho. One more, John. Alyssa, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. See you next time. Have a beautiful day.